Welcome to the Minority Report. I'm your host, Spiritual TT, and you're tuned into the program where we're talking about issues, accomplishments, and the lives of minorities. This week, we will explore the history of the Holocaust and have the unique opportunity to speak with a 91-year-old Holocaust survivor. The term Holocaust, originally from the Greek word holocaustin, which means sacrifice by fire, often refers to the Nazis' persecution of the Jewish people. The Holocaust began in 1933 with Adolf Hitler and his rise to power in Germany. The end of the atrocities in 1945, when the Nazis were defeated by the Allied powers, marks a time of great pain to the Jewish community, but today results in stories of courage, persistence, and faith. We'll speak not only with Holocaust survivor Leo Bertholtz, but also with two Jewish panelists who are the proud descendants of Holocaust survivors. Welcome back. We're here with the presidents of the Halal Club here on campus, Cynthia Breschler and Nina Shander. Thank you both for joining us today. You're welcome. I know you're a little bit nervous, but I promise I'll try and make it easy for you guys. So before we get into the issue of the Holocaust, which is what we're focusing on today, I just want to get the viewers acquainted with what, you, what your club does here on campus. So what do you guys do? So Halal is actually a nationwide group. Um, and it's basically a foundation for Jewish life on campus. So they have Halal's at a lot of college campuses um, all across the U.S. Um, and it's basically just a haven for people of Jewish faith to go to um, and kind of experience Judaism for people who are not of Jewish faith. So we do welcome uh, any person who's interested in learning about Judaism. So obviously going to a Catholic, predominantly Catholic school that might be more difficult for you to express your religion or find an outlet. Do you guys find that your club is a way for that to happen on campus and kind of to allow people to explore more of their faith? Yes, definitely. Um, we only have, as far as we know, like a few Jewish students on campus, but um, every two weeks we have Jewish students and non-Jewish students come so that everyone um, is able to get a better understanding of the religion. It is difficult because it is a Catholic school, so mm -hmm. not everyone is looking to get more, more into their faith because it's the minority religion, I mm -hmm. guess, in this sense. But, I mean, everyone who is interested is, has been happy with the progress we've made with the club. So obviously your club, you said, as you're saying, is kind of there as a support system for students on campus, but I'm sure it's there also to, in some sense, bring, bring back history and, and remember it. But before uh, obviously speaking about the Holocaust, what do you guys find is important to Jewish history? Because oftentimes that's the only thing that's linked to Judaism, at least here in the United States. I think it's important. I think the most important thing for myself is a lot of people look at the Jewish faith and think, oh, they've experienced such atrocities and they've gone through this and there's issues internationally to this day with the Jewish faith and other religions or ethnicities. I think it's important to look at Jews as survivors instead of as victims of, of, of the Holocaust or mm -hmm. victims of the Palestine-Israeli situation. Um, everyone involved, whether you're Jewish or Catholic or Gypsy, whatever, should be looked at as a survivor. I think that's the most important thing. How do you feel about that? I completely agree um, because when you're talking about the Holocaust, Jews are the majority who are victimized in that situation. Mm -hmm. um, and it always goes to the six million Jews topic that were killed in the right. Holocaust. And it's so many more people than that, and ethnicities as well. But people yeah. focus on the majority, as you're saying, when you have a, million, like, a figure like six million, it's kind of hard to ignore it. Exactly. But there were so many other people involved in that as well. There were political figures, gypsies, like Cynthia said. Um, members of the LGBT community. So it's important to focus on um, also how much we've overcome, um, especially since that era um, and since Israel has become a state in 1948. So. so now to delve a little bit into the Holocaust, which is a heavy topic, surely. But we had um, Leo Bertholtz, who's a survivor, 91 years old, come and speak um, to the campus. And he left an inspiring story in sort of the same statement that you're making of not being seen as a victim but more as a survivor. So both of you have been affected in some way or your families by the Holocaust. So how has it left a mark for you guys? I think for myself it's definitely a different story than Nina. Um, there's a website that you can go on and it, if you type in your name you can find out how many family members you lost. Mm -hmm. um, my family has lost over a hundred family members. However, I didn't know any of them. I know that I have family who had survived um, living in New York but I never got the chance to meet them before they passed away. So it's mm -hmm. difficult because now everyone's in their 80s and 90s. In the next five years, they're not going to be around. So it's important that 
you know, everyone remembers what had happened and if mm -hmm. you do have contact with those people to kind of get their stories before it's too right. late. I'm so glad that you brought that up because that's something that the speaker kind of resounded throughout his speech and being 91, it's, I feel like it'd be harder to accept the fact that obviously lifespan is not, you're not making it to 200 at least yeah. in the typical statistics and he understands where, um, I guess, where the life trend is going for him but he still is, is mindful of the fact that the story needs to be told and that's one thing that is the reason why he wrote his book kind of to get his message out so how important is it to continue to have the message of holocaust survivors not just the holocaust with history and facts like you're talking about for it to be present in our history okay. um from an early age my grandmother always told me whenever we brought up the holocaust or anything about judaism she goes never forget that is the one lesson that's very engraved in my culture and in my family um and it's very important to keep retelling the story we just had a holiday, Passover, and we tell that story every single year to remember um, how Moses led the Jews out of Egypt. Same thing with the Holocaust, because we were slaves then, and we were slaves in the Holocaust as well. So it's important so that it never happens again to keep retelling. Now, personally, I know earlier we were talking a little bit about both your stories, and you have a personal story with your grandmom. So how does that tie into your everyday life? Um, it definitely gives me a better um, insight into the Holocaust because she lived through it and she told me her personal story. Um, and it makes me very proud um, because I know someone personal who's a Holocaust survivor and she's part of my family. Mm -hmm. um, and she was able to get out. And that's why I'm sitting here today. So once we get to the point where we're at the thoughts and kind of trying to piece things together, how do people go through that process? What should they be looking to do in terms of education like for here at Loyola you have the opportunity to go to a club and kind of learn from members of the faith and and members who are committed to the faith to kind of you know learn about it but if you're not if you don't have that opportunity or that outlet what are you what should you do to I guess process all the info and the personal stories that you can get from something like this um, I think definitely you can get in for more information from the Holocaust Museum in DC which is so close by, but it's important to be sensitive mm -hmm. and um, maybe even reach out to people who were directly affected and find out the best way to cope with the situation because it's definitely um, difficult for anyone, whether you've been affected or not, to hear such atrocities that had taken place. Mm -hmm. And does it make it, I guess this is difficult to ask, but does it make it easier when you're of the Jewish faith, faith to hear the stories? I don't. Yeah, I, don't I mean, I wouldn't. So. I wouldn't know just because I'm of the Jewish faith, so, but I don't, I don't think it makes it any easier. I think actually it may even make it harder. Yeah, because you know that those are people that you're connected to in some way, and mm -hmm. to hear the exact stories of how poorly individuals were treated is very difficult to understand. They're, they're, like you said, you, you looked back and you found a, a hundred family members, so that's, it's a tie that's direct, but I think some people sometimes make the accusation that it's easier for someone of that faith and of that error to kind of accept it in some ways. What do you guys think about that? I I mean, a person of the era or me and Cynthia, like you and um, Cynthia, or or even a, a survivor as well, to kind of accept the accept the fact that it happened and be able to have that conversation, be able to process the information about the actual statistics and seeing how many people died and how many people were murdered and just treated poorly. I don't think it's definitely not easier and to a point it's like that could have been me mm -hmm. like because it's so it hits so close to home like this could have been my family um, and seeing those facts and like th those are my people so seeing how poorly they've been treated and seeing the numbers and the statistics and all the facts just means like it hits closer to home so it's even more of an emotional toll. So um, one thing that we want to do before we leave you guys, um, at least for the semester and this year, is let you guys see a personal exclusive with Leo Berthals and his story as a survivor. As always, you guys have watched an episode of The Minority Report, and we will see you next time. Thanks, Leo. Every story counts. Every story is one thread in the whole tapestry if I may use that metaphor. To me, this is very emotional, but I have a choice, you see. I have a choice. When somebody calls me, invites me to do a talk, I have the luxury of a choice. I can say yes, I can say no, right? 
but my family had no choice. They were taken without giving a choice. Do you want to go to that camp or not? They were taken and murdered. And that's the simple answer. We do it for them. We don't do it for us, but we do it for them who are no longer here. It's courage is fear that lasts one extra minute. In that extra minute, your fear makes you freeze and you don't know what to do. Or you may do something that you never had in you, that you never knew you had in you. Fear motivates you. My fear was to be killed. And I didn't want to be killed. And that's what kept me going. That's what kept me. One step ahead.